right, well, thank you very much, uh, Tim. This is a very humbling, a wonderful, wonderful honor from um, Tim, who first and foremost uh, is just a, a great community leader in Connecticut, uh, somebody who's made his neighbor's lives a lot better in West Hartford and is also stepped up to the plate when it comes to these broader, more global issues. Thank you uh, to the council for being such a, a great friend to me from the very beginning. Um, you know, for those of us who come to the Congress from uh, state legislatures, uh, we don't uh, come to these campaigns or to this job with uh, much of an awareness uh, about all of the issues that immediately confront you. And it's groups like the council who adopt candidates, many of which you're endorsing, today um, who are not just part of the process of getting good people elected, but also part of a really important educational process for those candidates that really didn't have a lot of exposure to these issues if it weren't for uh, groups like the council, groups like the, uh, the Truman Foundation, uh, others here in Washington who are seeking to build a bench of progressive foreign policy leaders. Um, and uh, for, for my money, um, there's no more worthy cause right now. Uh, we are at a moment where on the Republican side, the neoconservatives are ascendant. There was a debate that was playing out three or four years ago between the backers of the Iraq war, the interventionalists, and this new brand of Republicans who were advocating essentially for isolationism um, with Rand Paul as their standard bearer. And there was a question as to which group was going to win out. Well, I think we've uh, figured out uh, which group is winning. The uh, John McCain interventionalists are back in charge of the party, and you just look at the Republican presidential candidates, and you understand uh, that um, if one of them are to win, we are basically back to the same philosophy that got us into many of the messes that we are still digging ourselves out of. And so for progressives, it's time for us to develop um, a real bench of foreign policy advocates who believe in a robust, forward-looking presence for America in the world while recognizing the mistakes that we've made in the past. And um, many of my friends in the progressive movement over the last five years have really um, turned their sights inward to domestic politics. We've been able to do that in part because we've been comfortable relying on an administration who we believe generally shares our vision of internationalism without um, knee-jerk interventionalism. Um, but we don't know what's going to happen a year and a half from now. Um, and shame on us if we haven't developed in the Congress a, a group of members who are not just reacting to world events, but have a, a progressive foreign policy vision of their own. So I hope some of you will take a look, if you haven't already, at an op-ed that um, I wrote uh, along with Senators uh, Schatz and uh, Heinrich that's in foreign policy this morning outlining uh, eight principles that should underlie a progressive foreign policy vision. Um, I hope that you'll encourage other members uh, of our caucus as well as people in the House to join us uh, in trying to think proactively uh, about some of these issues. Uh, we've got an amendment to the NDAA um, that is um, growing uh, co-sponsors literally as we sit here, as we speak, to prohibit uh, the deployment of combat troops to Iraq and Syria, which we hope to get a, a, a vote on. Uh, we passed out of the Foreign Relations Committee a partial State Department reauthorization bill. It's not a great bill, but it's important that Congress get back in the game of authorizing the State Department on an annual basis, not just authorizing the Department of Defense on an annual ba basis. There are all sorts of things that we need to do in order to make people understand that in order to protect this nation in an era where the massive deployment of US combat troops creates as many enemies most of the time as it destroys, if not more, um, that the tools that the State Department has with respect to conflict resolution, humanitarian assistance, refugee assistance, um, are more important in many respects than the military tools that we have, and yet, we still exist in a world in which there are um, more lawyers at the Department of Defense than there are diplomats at the Department of State, which just gives you a reflection of how badly misplaced uh, our priorities are. So I'm um, uh, really humbling uh, to, to receive this award. Um, uh, Tim's right, I, I see no reason to, to, to wait. Um, I think we're gonna get some great reinforcements in this next 
uh, class, irrespective of their party. I think we're going to get some people who are going to join uh, our effort. Um, and uh, we've got to build a, a bench of progressives in the Senate and in the House uh, who don't just believe in a progressive foreign policy vision, um, but who have the information, uh, who have the confidence and the courage uh, to go out and speak truth to power, uh, confront the hardliners and the neoconservatives, um, not be cowed uh, by um, their rhetoric, uh, which is uh, completely lacking in subtlety uh, and often designed to try to blot out and silence those who have a, a different viewpoint. Um, the council, uh, and Angela, your leadership of the council uh, helps all of us feel a little bit more courageous uh, to take those stands uh, and make those statements. So uh, thank you very much for this honor. It's really, really